Monday evening, folks, it's June 17, 2024. Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandage is here with you as we kick off coverage on what is the first, so to speak, storm of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. We're talking about potential tropical cyclone one that will likely soon become Alberto, the first named storm of 2024. So let's become reacquainted with the tropical terminology as we enter a new season. So what is a potential tropical cyclone? Well, it's a tropical disturbance that is not yet fully developed. However, it enables the National Hurricane Center to issue watches and warnings, which it has done for PTC-1. There are tropical storm watches up for parts of the Texas coast. And it also allows them to put out a forecast cone to give us a general trajectory of where it will be heading in the short term. Let's start with those watches and warnings. For now, it's just watches, meaning that about 48 hours out from now, tropical storm conditions are possible in the areas where the watch is up. Now, it extends from the coastal waters up to the uh, south of Galveston and the Bolivar Peninsula, all the way down south to Brownsville, interior locations, coastal locations from Corpus Christi down south and portions of Mexico as well. Those will likely be upgraded as the storm gets a little bit closer. So here's the latest. PTC-1 formed this afternoon. Now, it has the potential to become the first name storm. I shared that name with you. The first name on the list for 2024 is Alberto. Now, landfall in the U.S., unlikely. Landfall more likely in Mexico. Impacts in the U.S., though, very, very likely. And that's why it's so pertinent to stress the fact that even though landfall can occur hundreds of miles away, impacts are felt well outside of the landfall area. Here's a quick reiteration of the 2024 Atlantic storm names. Alberto tops the list there. And I'll tell you what, we're entering an active pattern here, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a couple more named storms in the next couple of weeks, especially coming out of the larger circulation that's sitting over Central America right now. That I'll get into in just a second. But in terms of the first named storm, we're pretty much right on target when we consult climatology or the average first date for the first storm is June 20th. So here we are on the 17th. We're right near there. We're not at the name storm yet, so we still got another day maybe. And you see the second, third, fourth, and fifth name storms of the year and the corresponding dates when that typically occurs on or around. However, when you look back over the last, let's go back 10 years, the first name storm and when it occurred, here's the last five years and uh, the occurrence of the first name storm happened well before today. We have to go all the way back to 2014 before we see a name storm, the first name storm develop later than today or tomorrow to July 1st. Remember 2016 in January? That was a hurricane, actually. That was Alex back in 2016 that formed in the North Atlantic. Didn't impact anybody, though. All right, let's get some diagnostics now. Here's potential tropical cyclone one. Here's all the stats on it as of the 8 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. One thing that really comes at you from the satellite image is how large the overall circulation is. However, the area we're watching as PTC-1, possibly soon to be Tropical Storm Alberto or even a Tropical Depression, is embedded in this overall circulation and is down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche area, and will eventually kind of detach itself from the circulation and lift off to the north. Let's switch up filters now on this and use infrared satellite imagery to get a feel for the temperature of the cloud tops. Now, how this helps us is where we see the colder cloud tops is the more convection, the more thunderstorm activity, the stronger thunderstorm activity. And that is depicted by the shades of white. So you're noticing most of the strongest thunderstorm activity is located over land over the Yucatan Peninsula and not so much near the generalized center of PTC-1 here. So it's got some organization to go, which is another reason why it's only a PTC and hasn't been given a, a depression or a name as a tropical storm just yet. Switching it up again, showing you water vapor imagery. Overall conditions, very conducive for tropical development. We have the moist mid-levels. You can see plenty of moisture here on satellite imagery on water vapor. Dry air is parked well to the north and west. That may become a problem a little bit later on. We also have low wind shear. And we've got very, very warm sea surface temperatures, which I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of these readings here are already in the mid to upper 80s. To support tropical development, you need at least 80 degree water temperature. So big check mark there. These temperatures are running a good three to as high as five degrees Fahrenheit above 
average for this time of the year. So the Gulf has been cooking, the Caribbean has been cooking, the main development region has been cooking, all setting us up and laying the ingredients or the foundation for likely a very active season. And we're starting to kind of see that come together now. So here's the forecast cone. Again, a PTC designation allows the NHC to issue this. And you can see here that it does have it strengthening a little bit more. Already has winds at 40 miles per hour. So we're already at tropical storm force winds. We just don't have that organized center. Potentially getting that as it tracks to the north and eventually north and due west. As we get into Wednesday and potentially Thursday, we could have Alberto here before making landfall well south of Brownsville into the north, uh, northern coast of Mexico, heading inland, raining itself out and bringing a lot of impacts in terms of freshwater flooding. A lot of rain coming from this. There's a ton of tropical moisture being pulled in from this system. Overall, the spaghetti plots pretty much in line with what we're seeing on the uh, forecast cone from the Hurricane Center, pretty consolidated and then a little bit more of a spread as you get a little bit farther out in time. Let's talk impacts now. The number one impact from this is going to be widespread heavy rainfall leading to flooding, potentially even mudslides down here to the mountainous terrain of interior Mexico as that moisture butts up against it and rains it out. We're talking a half foot or more of rainfall between now and say Thursday afternoon. So flooding is likely. Storm surge is also a risk for immediate coastal locations. Some of those values could get up two, three, four feet above ground level. Large swells and of course wind is a component of this as well, but not a huge impact from wind. Some areas right near that storm center could see gusts up to 50 miles per hour. Now that's not the only system we're watching out in the Atlantic. Of course, there's PTC-1 down there in the southern Gulf of Mexico, but there's also another wave here that with the recent update from the Hurricane Center still has low chances. It was 30% earlier within seven days. Now it's down to 20%. However, the American and the uh, European models do track this westwards and eventually potentially near the southeast coast of the U.S. Development odds are low for this, but it will likely increase rain chances in the Carolinas as we get into the upcoming weekend. So that's the latest for you there out in the tropical Atlantic. We'll be tracking PTC-1. That will become Alberto soon. If you have any questions, you can always find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, X, and on TikTok at Tim Talk Weather. We'll see you back here again tomorrow.